scripture reading today is from the Gospel book, the book of Luke, and that will be chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. This can be found in the Pew Bibles on page, page 850 or 1627. Jesus heals ten men with leprosy. On his way to Jerusalem, Jesus, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. He stood at a distance and called out in a loud, loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to them, to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. May God add his blessing to this reading. <coughs> so I want to encourage you to come back tonight for the service tonight. Our choir is going to be singing. The First Baptist Church choir is going to be singing. And then there's a community choir who's going to be singing. Mike Dodd is going to share a different selection on his French horn for the offertory. And our two speakers this year are uh, Pastor Jimmy from the Nazarene Church and Pastor Melanie from Epic. So I encourage you to come, and there's going to be some um, refreshments afterwards as well, if food is a good, um, a good variety to get in here. It'll be a great service. Well, let's pray and get into our message this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you. We do give thanks with a grateful heart this morning. We give thanks for your Son. And as the physical sun is shining through this window this morning, it reminds us of your warm love for us. Help us today, Father, to remember that you call us to be a thankful people. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. A poet once wrote, As a rule, man's a fool. When it's hot, he wants it cool. And when it's cool, he wants it hot always wanting what is not. In our daily bread, this story was shared. Uh, thankfulness seems to be a lost art today. Warren Wiersbe illustrated this pro problem in his commentary on Colossians. He told about a ministerial student in Evanston, Illinois, who was a part of a life-saving squad. In 1860, a ship went aground on the shore of Lake Michigan near Evanston, and Edward Spencer waded again and again into the frigid waters to rescue 17 passengers. In the process, his health was permanently damaged. Some years later at his funeral, it was noted that not one of the people rescued ever thanked him. I want to share some things about thankfulness this morning. We are called to be a thankful people. And the first reason for that is that thankfulness is God's will for us. I did a quick little search in Bible Gateway in the NIV Bible, and the word thanks is used at least 100 times, and the word words give thanks is used at least 48 times. And it always gives you a highlighted verse with what words you're searching. And the highlighted verse that came up was 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Mark Buchanan wrote, We can speak all the lofty phrases we want about God's sovereign goodness, but the proof is in the thanking. The Bible tells us to give thanks for all things and in all things. Only thankfulness on this scale is an incontestable sign that we believe what we say. So thankfulness is God's will for us. Second is that thankfulness is grounded in what God has done for us. 
We read that scripture passage today about the ten lepers, and there's a, a, a painting, a picture on the front of your bulletin, which is a representation of that, uh, where one, one leper is returning to thank Jesus, and the others are kind of walking on. And Charles Brown asked the question, why did only one cleansed leper return to thank Jesus? And the following are nine suggested reasons why the nine did not return. One waited to see if the cure was real. One waited to see if it would last. One said, we'll see Jesus later. One decided that he had never had leprosy. One said he would have gotten well anyway. One gave the glory to the priests. One said, oh, well, Jesus didn't really didn't do anything. One said, any rabbi could have done it. And one said, well, you know, I already was really much improved. I think it's a very creative way of showing the things that we say sometimes in response. In a speech proclaiming the last Thursday of November as a day of Thanksgiving, Abraham Lincoln said this in 1863 in the midst of our country's civil war. He said, we have been the recipients of the choicest bounties of heaven. We have been preserved these many years in peace and prosperity. We have grown in numbers, wealth, and power as no other nation has ever grown, but we have forgotten God. We have forgotten the gracious hand which preserved us in peace and multiplied and enriched and strengthened us. And we have fairly imagined in the deceitfulness of our hearts that all these blessings were produced by some superior wisdom and virtue of our own. Intoxicated with unbroken success, we have become too self-sufficient to feel the necessity of redeeming and preserving grace. Too proud to pray to the God who made us. We're to give thanks because of what God has done for us. We sang it in that last song. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Why? Because he's given Jesus Christ his son. I shared with the kids, if there's nothing else that you think you can give thanks for, God has given us his only son. And that second verse says, let the weak say I'm strong, let the poor say I'm rich, because of what the Lord has done for us. And Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2 say, Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord and forget not all his benefits. Thankfulness is grounded in what God has done for us. Third, thankfulness is a choice. And our Daily Bread devotional writer wrote this. In Lansing, Michigan, pretty local. In Lansing, Michigan, during the winter, we don't get many sunny days. But last year, God blessed us with one of those beautiful days, and it seemed that almost everyone was thanking God except me. As I left the office, a man said, What a wonderful day we're having. This is a gift from God. To which I replied, Yes, but we're getting snow later this week. And she said of herself, What ingratitude. Thankfulness is a choice. We have a choice every day to put on a garment of gratitude, or a garment of grumbling. In the Old Testament book of Numbers, the Israelites were grumblers. God had miraculously delivered them from slavery in Egypt and provided for them in the desert, yet they grumbled at everything. I'm so sick of this manna. There's no water. The Canaanites are too strong. Moses is too bossy. And on and on and on it went. And in Numbers 11, it says this, the people complained about their hardships in the hearing of the Lord, and when he heard them, his anger was aroused. Then fire from the Lord burned among them and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. And when the people cried out to Moses, he prayed to the Lord, and the fire died down. And so that place was called Taborah, because fire from the Lord had burned among them. Instead of choosing a garment of gratitude, they chose a garment of grumbling, which was not the will of God. They needed to heed the musical lyrics of Martin Greenhart, which we also just sang in the song, Now Thank We All Our God. 
Martin Rinkhart was the only pastor in the walled city of Eilenburg, Germany during the Thirty Years' War, a war that devastated Germany in general and Eilenburg in particular. Being a walled city, Eilenburg became a place of refuge and soon became badly overcrowded, rendering it susceptible to disease. The plague of 1637 decimated the town. In 1637, Redcart conducted funerals for 5,000 wow. residents, including his wife. He often conducted 40 or 50 funerals a day. So when he prays, guide us when perplexed, he's not talking about minor inconveniences. Thanksgiving erupts from this state song, and Redcart wrote the first two stanzas not as a hymn of public worship, but as a table grace for his family. At the end of the war, his hymn was sung to celebrate the signing of the Peace of Westphalia, the treaty that ended the war. Paul, in scripture in Philippians 4, was in prison when he wrote these words. I rejoiced greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or what. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Thankfulness in all circumstances is a choice. And thankfulness is a choice that can be cultivated. Repetitive complaining will attract things to complain about. But repeated gratitude will attract things for you to be thankful about. It's a choice. Thankfulness doesn't always come naturally or easily to us, but it can be learned and made a part of our character. My friend Lucinda Seacrest McDowell in her book Dwelling Places wrote about thankfulness. Last year I shared with her, I don't know if it was at Thanksgiving, but in a message I shared with you about, you know, every day setting a goal to announce or record three things that you are thankful for each day. Keep a jar to write on a piece of paper things that you're thankful for. To give to other people. We have so many ways to do that. Between our reverse advent calendar, there's a, a giving tree out here. There are going to be other ways. Giving to people who are in need as an expression of thanks to God. And to worship God when we're here together with thanksgiving in our heart. And she wrote in her book, at the end of a devotional about this, what she called the quote of the day. If you pause to think, you'll have cause to thank. Thankfulness is a choice and can be cultivated. And finally, thankfulness changes us. Vernon Grounds shared this story. Corey Ten Boom was an inspiration and challenge to thousands of people after World War II. Hearts were stirred and lives changed as she told with moving simplicity about God's sufficiency to meet her needs, even as a prisoner in a Nazi concentration camp. Not only was the camp filthy, but there were fleas everywhere. Corey's sister, Betsy, who was imprisoned with her, insisted that 1 Thessalonians 5.18 was God's will for them in everything give thanks. But giving thanks in a flea-infested place seemed unrealistic to Corey, until she realized why the guards didn't come into their barracks to make them stop praying and stop singing hymns. The guards wanted to avoid the fleas. So the prisoners were free to worship and to study the Bible as they pleased. The fleas, even the fleas, were agents of grace and something to be thankful for. What are some of the fleas in your lives? They aren't big difficulties, but they're petty annoyances, and they are little trials from which we can't escape. Is it possible that they are one of the ways the Lord teaches us spiritual lessons and helps us to increase our endurance? Grumbling and gratitude have two things in common. They both become habits, and they both become contagious. Again, my friend Lucinda McDowell says this, we can choose to whine, grumble, complain, or even just neglect looking for God's good gifts. 
Or we can discipline ourselves to recognize them. The more we do it, the more naturally we do it. I want you to take this blue sheet out of your bulletin. And if you don't happen to have one and you need one, I'm sure the ushers have some extra bulletins back there that they can pass out for you. Ann Roskamp, who wrote a really popular book called 1,000 Gifts, said, When we practice giving thanks, we practice the presence of Christ. And it is always a practice of the eyes. We don't have to change what we see, only the way we see it. Uh, with the worship committee, we chose to uh, sing 10,000 Reasons as one of our hymns during this month for thanks. And that song is from that Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, all my soul, all within me, bless his holy name, bless the Lord and forget not all his benefits. And we sing that song, uh, I, a lot of you know it, and we, we sing it and we say, oh, 10,000 reasons for my heart to find. Is that true? Is that true? Today I'm asking you to write one. We're going to respond in thankfulness while we sing that song. And so on this sheet is written those first two verses of that song. And it says, Today I bless the Lord and thank Him for. And there's a place for you to write what you are thankful for today. And as we close and sing that song, 10,000 Reasons, I'm going to ask you to bring those slips up and put them on the altar in thankfulness to God. <coughs> we can sing so many things and then not really put our feet to them. And if we do believe it's true that we have so many reasons to thank our God, if only for His Son, Jesus Christ, then we need to cultivate, choose to become more thankful people. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we come to the end of this time together being reminded that like our pilgrim forefathers, we are to be thankful people. They didn't always have a whole lot to be thankful for in that first year, Father. So many of them went to be with you. And yet, Father, they could be thankful. They are known for their thankfulness. Let us, Father, take heed to your word that says that being thankful people, rejoicing and praying is your will for us. Let us start today as we sing this song together and bring and lay before you our thankfulness to you. Because, and in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Receive this Thanksgiving benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the eyes of your heart be open to all of the blessings which surround you. May this awareness produce a harvest of generosity in your spirit. May thankfulness rise up within you, not just during this short season, but day after day, from the early morning watch until you retire for the night. May your prayers reflect gratitude while also acknowledging the needs of others whose situations are so drastically different. May thoughts of Jesus fill your mind and thanksgiving be your response. Amen. Amen. Amen.